There she goes, ladies and gentlemen. That's it right there. April 5th, 2022, I began my journey of hiking the entire Appalachian Trail. I began my hike and my life-changing journey at the Approach Trail in Amicola Falls, Georgia, where it then connects to the official start of the Appalachian Trail at Springer Mountain, where it then goes through 14 states, totaling 2,194.3 miles. I began this journey as a rookie. I had never camped or backpacked solo before this journey and only completed a few backpacking sections. I also began this journey in the rain and I ran through a lot of obstacles in all four seasons my first week on trail, but I kept myself open to learn and I continued to take one step at a time. The people and hiking community I met along the way was absolutely life-changing. We gave each other a helping hand, motivated one another, we shared gratitude, struggles, beliefs, fears, and goals, and I made friends that quickly became family and that will last for a lifetime. I hit my first milestone as I finished up Georgia and crossed into my first state, North Carolina. The first 100 miles seemed to take forever, but once I made it, it was one of the most awarding moments of my entire journey. I slowly started to become more and more present and adjusting to this kind of lifestyle. Everything started to merge together and time seemed non-existent and I never knew what day it was. As time went on, I realized how insanely hungry my body was and I learned the true definition of hiker hunger and realized how important calories was for my body to perform at such a high functioning level. I was learning to deal with challenges as they approach, but I did realize early on how challenging this journey was actually going to be. I also learned how heavy food and water actually weighs and how the weather lies a lot. I learned what gear I didn't need and how every elevation gain was still a struggle and how crammed the shelters really could be. The Smoky Mountains was a major section where hikers drop off and stop their journey. The Smoky Mountains has always been appealing to me and hiking through was another milestone that I quickly celebrated. The fears I once had slowly began to fade and the things that I was once uncomfortable with started to become more and more like second nature. This journey truly made me realize how simple life can be and how challenging the small tasks are and how much gratitude and happiness filled my heart over the simple things in life. I definitely took my time with my journey. I made time to dance in the fields and appreciate the views and chase the sunsets. I learned to trust the timing of things that every person I met came into my life for a reason and brought me a value, a lesson, a smile, a memory, a conversation. Regardless of what they brought to my life, it was all needed and came at the most perfect timing. Hitchhiking and going into town went from stressful to the absolute most fun, something I definitely looked forward to. And I met so many trail angels along the way. They all set my heart so heavenly. And I realized the ones that help out the most have a story and usually hold the most pain. It's seeing the strength in these people that restored my faith in humanity and made memories I won't ever forget. Most of them saved my day and came at the most perfect time. In. Not every day was easy and not every day was beautiful. Some days was crazy winds, fog, cold, wet, lots of mud, thunderstorms, but through all the struggles, I knew I was exactly where I belonged and I quickly realized chasing the sunshine was much better than focusing on the bad.
The longer I was on the AT, I realized there are no distractions and your mind is one of the biggest obstacles. No matter how many steps you take, you just can't run from it. You're forced to come to terms with your fears and who you are as a person. I then truly realized how powerful self-healing truly is. Milestones were hit again when I made it one-fourth of the way and as Roanoke Delville was approaching. As the days got hotter, night hiking and cowboy camping definitely became more frequent. I truly began to understand how everything is connected in life. I started to accept and appreciate all my chapters the bright ones and the ones that's not so bright because it's the chapters that led me to this exact spot and moment here and now and that everything happens for a reason. One of my biggest milestones was making it back to the Roanoke and Delville area. I completed my first hike here in 2015 and never stopped. 2017 is when I packed up from Alabama and started calling Virginia home, and I quickly became obsessed with all the hiking trails along the AT. Now walking back through familiar territory, seeing loved ones, and having loved ones hike with me was such an awarding and emotional moment that impacted pretty hard. I slowed my miles, stayed present, and made the most of this section. You know Another milestone celebrated as I made it one-third of the way to Katahdin. The Blue Ridge Parkway brought back some memories and will forever have a piece of my heart. And I also realized that every opportunity I had to gather laundry, a shower, and a bed was truly a blessing that I will forever have appreciation for. As I was still in reach of Roanoke, I took some time off, rested my body, relaxed, and managed to squeeze in a camping trip with my main people. What do we have here? 900 miles! From here, the trail actually started to become a little more challenging physically, a little bit with a train, but more mentally, knowing I was out of reach of Roanoke, it was emotional, and the trail itself started to feel very long, which Virginia is the longest state on the AT with over 500 miles. I counted on the music, dance moves, and audiobooks to get me through as the Virginia blues started to creep in. The roller coaster section definitely had crazy elevation gain and tested my patience, but when I quickly passed over the 1,000 mile marker, I then realized this would be one of the most awarding milestones of my entire journey. The 1,000 miles just felt and hit so different than the rest. I celebrated the halfway point at the ATC as I entered West Virginia and collected my number of 1,360. Seeing how the numbers changed when I first began my journey was a different sense of accomplishment to know I was still on my way to Katahdin. As the journey continued, I hit milestones, learned life lessons, continued to make lifelong friends, and celebrated by having pizza delivered to a local shelter. As the rocks in Pennsylvania became more and more challenging, me and the tramway took a few days off to relax. We ate good food, we met an amazing trail angel, chased sunsets, and experienced life on a dairy farm. I don't need the final things alive. We started to embrace the rocks more and more as they became more bouldering style. And hey, rumor had it, we were just prepping ourselves for the White Mountains.
It is a beautiful day. Made it to New Jersey. And I just crossed over 1,300 miles. Resupplying became more and more challenging as the food started to become old and we started to burn more calories and the right nutrition started to become more crucial. As the water became more and more scarce, amazing people provided water from their yards, which saved the day more times than I could even begin to count. And new shoes always felt like Christmas. Embracing the body hair became a fun challenge. As time went on, I became more and more content with my body and accepting who I was as a person. The summer and weather became hot, some of the hottest days I've ever experienced in my life. The bugs came swarming, dehydration was a thing, water was scarce, brain fog made things difficult, but I knew stopping wasn't an option. I noticed it was a different world for the ski resorts in the summer, but hiking through made it a lot of fun and it was a huge bonus that they offered free rides for through hikers. I realized the finish line was approaching as Katahdin was 500 miles away. I became more in tune with my senses, the way I smelled things, the way things tasted, my surroundings, the energy, mother nature, and just seeing life in the most purest forms. Mount Musilaki was the first mountain that I climbed in the White Mountains. I was nervous and intimidated as I've been hearing about the White Mountains since I began this journey, but the White Mountains were the most challenging, but yet the most rewarding. North Kingsman was the particular mountain that was the most impactful in my journey. As I hiked in the dark and watched the sunrise, I realized that I began my journey of the AT to find myself, but I quickly realized along the way that I never knew who I was to begin with, and you can't find something that's not lost. This was the moment that I started to truly live for me. This was the moment I realized things are always working out for us, whether it seems that way or not, and no one determines my worth but me, and we never have to settle for anything less than what we deserve. This was the moment I realized life isn't necessarily about finding yourself, but it's about creating yourself and making most of the life that we have. I continued to take one step at a time. I took in all the 360 views and was reminded how small me and my worries actually are in this big old world. And there's so much appreciation and gratitude in the air we breathe. As I crossed over into Maine, I was in disbelief as I stared at the sign with tears running down my face. They say Maine gets easier, but Southern Maine, my friends, did not get any easier. It was actually even more difficult. The rocks were bigger, more challenging, and required more of an effort as my body was fatigued. But as they say, no rain, no pain, no Maine. And Maine definitely had a different sense of peace, beauty, and accomplishment. The way I became so comfortable living this lifestyle brought me a form of self-acceptance. I learned to detach myself from situations and lose the judgment I had in others and myself. I did things I said I'd never do and I was living my best stinky life out of a backpack. As I hiked through all the seasons, I was reminded how important it was to flow as we grow, evolve, and change. The seasons reminded me of life as I learned to trust my body and trust my time in. There was no need for comparison. We all blossom when our time is right and we all have a journey. It was a new wave of emotions as I celebrated my last 100 miles on trail. Oh, I'm like 70 miles away from Katahdin and it's so insane to me and I'm a little emotional because this is the mountain that I've been chasing since Georgia. Like Springer Mountain, Georgia to Mount Katahdin in Maine. It's what I've talked about, dreamed about, worked for. It's been in the workings. Like I have ate shit. I've been cold. I've been hungry. I've been thirsty. I've been lonely. I've been strong as a motherfucker. <laughs> like, I've overcome things that I didn't even know was possible. I've learned to 
let go of things that I cannot control. I've learned to not control life, but just enjoy right here, like surround you. And it's crazy because it's like, as the journey is coming to an end, it's emotional, but it's everything I've learned in between. <laughs> it's the journey, the journey. It feels good that I made it this far. And Mama Katana, I'm coming for you. As Katahdin was approaching and the journey was coming to an end, I realized the trail brought me so much more than I could have ever imagined, more than I asked for or that I was even prepared for. The emotions would come in like a tornado at times, and it felt like my life was crashing. The AT tore me down mentally and physically to absolutely nothing, just to build me back up into the best version of myself and made me realize the strength that I didn't even know I could carry. I thought I was chasing mountains on the AT, but I realized as I was walking to Katahdin that there's always gonna be another mountain and it's everything you learn in the valleys and on the way to the mountain that matters. I chased my dream one step at a time. I believed in myself and I did it.